Well then, we come this morning to the most sacred and the most important work within creation. It's not government, it's not the judiciary, it is nothing but the ministry of God. There can be no higher office, not one, not even a monarch, is greater than a minister of the word of the Lord. Not one. All men go around and boast they've got this title and they've got that title and I'm a monarch and a, I'm a MP and so on and so on and so forth. So what? So? Do you live up to those titles? Rarely. Should I admire you because of the titles? No. I respect the titles. I don't respect the person behind the titles unless that person has proved themselves worthy of the title. We Christians are not of the world. The world sees the office, fears the office, respects the office to the extent that they do the person behind the office. Man must prove himself to be worthy of our trust. Must prove himself. Now, we're living in a day and age which has got pride written all over it. And the aban abandonment of God and everything that is sacredly held. Yes, sacredly held in every sphere. <clears throat> <Pardon me. clears throat> and why is this? Because man is a corrupt being. And who has added to this? But Arminianism. My Arminianism. And its theatrical, upbeat side. Hmm? Neo evangelical. Arminian, neo evangelical. Like Athaliah, wasn't it? Who broke up Christendom, as it were. Hmm? Or Jewry in those days. And the houses of God and all that was sacred and dedicated to God, she dedicated to Balaam. Arminianism is the same. Totally the same. Athaliah. Dedicates all that is dedicated to God to Balaam with all the false ecumenical neo evangelical fire of gospel campaigns, hmm? along with his dedicated saints. Oh, uh, he's got a saint here, he's got a saint there, Saint Toza, Saint Spurgeon, Saint Moody. Hmm? What spirit is that of? Spirit of Romanism, of Babel, of the devil, hmm? veneration of men who turn themselves out to be devils. Devils indeed. False prophets, false teachers, false fire. Hmm? And of course, when people who are venerating these Persons whom they've made idols in their hearts, they say, well, you know, we're not venerating them, we're honouring them, we're respecting them. Does not the papist the same? What difference is there between you, Mr. Protestant, and the popish? Hmm? They will defend their idols. You will defend your idols. Why? Have we become your enemy? Because we tell you the truth? Yes. Flee from idols. Flee. 
The very first commandment is the first commandment to flee from idolatry because that is the most potent, the most wicked thing that man is addicted to. Hmm? Now then, Paul says to Timothy in chapter 2 of the first epistle to Timothy, this is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Now, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Today, the word here, desireth and bishop, is misconstrued. Totally, totally misconstrued because of the corruption of the carnal mindedness of carnal men who are destitute of the truth and never can come to the truth. First of all, if a man desire the office of a bishop, desire, if you look it up, I have not looked it up, but I can well appreciate that the word desire in the original is the word that we accept as being vocational. That desire towards a goal set in a person by the hand of God. Yes, by the hand of God. A desire, a talent given by God to all mankind. Because God is the Father and the Creator and the Maker and Sustainer of all of his creation. He provides for all his creation. He sets bounds to all his creation. He overflows the bounds to all his creation. He gives sun to the righteous and sun to the unrighteous. Food to the righteous and food to the unrighteous. He gives life, breath and being to both. You neo-evangelical wicked people that say that God is only the God of the children of God. No, not God. Yes, in first principle. We that are the children of God are chosen of God before ever this creation ever came into being by the hand of God. We are there, we are principally there in the Lamb's Book of Life and therefore we are predominant over all. And this world was created for us to pass through in order for us to have glorified bodies and to return with songs and joy in our hearts. Return to Zion. Return to Zion. The full justification by faith realised. We know we are justified fully. But the crowning of ourselves. For to know ourselves, even as Christ knows us, shall be once we have taken off this flesh. Then we shall. No hindrance, even though we know now that we have peace <clears throat> and righteousness and justice and assurance forever that we are justified. We stand on the rock, Christ Jesus. But there's that one step that will do away with any seeing through a glass darkly. We shall be there. None of this world 
shall ever interfere with us. No thoughts of this world shall ever come into our minds. Nothing, absolutely nothing. The desire here is vocation. Now in this world, we have people who have carnal desire rather than a vocational desire. There is the difference. A carnal desire to take upon themselves a job and to learn that job and we come across these people and they're just wooden tops, aren't they? Basically we go along and we've got a doctor, say a doctor, who hasn't had a vocational calling. He's like a wooden top. Or a filing cabinet. He's got all the information, but nothing about him. No discernment. No discernment whatsoever. Whereas you go to one who is vocational, who is meant to be there, there's discernment, there's caring, there's understanding. It flows from them. Flows. And this should be the same with a minister. It should flow. How shall they preach unless they're called? They have to be called of God. And we understand, if we understand the scriptures, that we do not put ourselves in the place of a minister of God. We could teach each other, but to be a minister, an under-shepherd, under-bishop, of the Lord Jesus Christ, is again the highest office in creation. And as such, those who obtain that office should be qualified for that office. Not like these vagabonds that get up, oh, I've got a Bible, I'm going to give something because I feel like I can give something. Hey, love, sit down there in your plastic chairs and I'm going to give you some. I tell you, this is what I think. Oh. Well, most of them are scruffy as buggery. Absolutely. I've seen tramps better. Hobos on the street, far better dressed, far better mannered. They treat the office of God sacrilegiously. What is thou to do to take my word in thy hand and my statute, says God, to these people? What? Hmm? There should be fear when it comes to this office. There should be a running away, not running to. Even with a person who has got a vocational calling will testify that they want to run away. There is a desire and planted of God and a talent planted of God within them. Many talents indeed within that office. Discernment and understanding. Ability to speak and a whole lot more insights natural ability to read the word of God according to how heaven has laid down the word of God without any carnal mindedness to the interpretation of God they're well fitted but they'll tell you one of Romeo Calvins of this world and Luthers of this world want to run wild. Want to run a mile. Today, of course, as we say, we've got all these urchins and they're running towards the ministry of God because they want to be seen of man. And they have this titular God in their minds, in their thoughts. God is smiling upon them because, oh, I've got the Bible and I can preach this and I preach that and I'm standing for God. And if I go out and protest against this and this and this and this, God is standing with me. Vain man. 
worthless, worthless. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Again, the word bishop is interchangeable. Interchangeable. Have we got that word? Minister, pastor, overseer. Hmm? There are various, various words that are used, titles, for minister of God. Here we are referred to the under-shepherd, the under-bishop. The bishop of our souls is Jesus Christ. He's a bishop. He's a prophet. He's a priest. He's a king. He's the angel of the covenant. He is Emmanuel. He is Shiloh, and so on and so on and so forth. All interchangeable because heaven is living. It's not dead. So it is here. Bishop. Now, we look upon Anglicanism, we look out there at Anglicanism in, in the United Kingdom, and these, these crooks, because they've got crooks in their hand, and they've got all these vestments on, all these fancy, gaudy vestments on, and a mitre on their bonts, on their head. Fishy's mitre. And people are bowing down to them and scraping, and if you say, well, you know, what's this ponce doing here? Eh? Come on, get, get all that regal, royal nonsense off. Oh, but they, the, the, their peace, peace turns into anger. Oh, they don't like it. Don't like it. Don't want to be a common man. They've not been called. Anglicanism is the daughter of Romanism. And that's how it is. And people who defend Anglicanism are defending Romanism. Anglicanism came from Romanism. Henry VIII. Oh, put on some new garments, have a new church. Heart's oh, still the same. The spirit is still the same in those that are put on different robes. And then you get a prayer book. That's after the Protestant reformed religion. So what? If you go into a library and you pick up an encyclopedia about justification by faith, you look it up. Does that make that encyclopedia Christian? No, it doesn't. It does not at all make it Christian. You've got to have the spirit behind it. Okay. Now then. Um, so, we don't go around with funny hats on and funny clothing, black clothing to attract people like the Pharisees and have the people to blow their trumpets for us basically their mouths. For us, we don't have people turning around. When I say us, I'm talking now about the ministers. Ministers, a godly minister will not attract people's attention to themselves, but rather attract people's attention to God. They point away from themselves and point to God. And if any dare turn around and start calling them pastor, pastor, they're rebuked. And the minister rebukes them because that's idolatry. That's the same as going into a Roman church and listening to people saying my priest my priest 
Look for the Spirit. That's what we're supposed to do. Look for the Spirit behind what is being said. Because what is being said has a spirit to it, right behind it. Just like the devil in the garden. His words were one thing, but the, what was the implication of his words? What was the spirit he was moved by? Well, he was the devil. So evil moved him. And he being the principal evil, he couldn't deny himself. Now, if any man desire the office of a bishop, you desire a good work. Note, thirdly, if any woman or any man desireth the office of a bishop, doesn't say that, does it? Hmm? No. Oh, Paul! Oh, you're wrong, Paul! Really? If any man desireth the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Hmm? Verse 2. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. The husband of one wife. In other words, 